Hello, I'm going to start the presentation. The topic is, are you watching TV now? Is it real? Hacking of smart TV with all day. I'm Jong Ho Lee at Korea University, South Korea. And here's the Ming Eun Kim at KAIST, South Korea. Thank you for inviting us. The contents are as follow. We start with project introduction, after then web OS structure and analysis. In the middle of a presentation, the speaker will change to Ming Eun Kim. He will talk about vulnerability analysis of web OS smart TV. After then, he will introduce some hacking scenario of web OS smart TV. Finally, we will demonstrate about one of them. I'm going to introduce about this project. As you know, in March year, WikiLeaks posted in, an article about BERT7. BERT7 is one of the CIA project code names. In the middle of an article, there's a content about Weeping Angel. Weeping Angel is a hacking tool to attack a Samsung smart TV. It recorded conversation in the room and sent them over the internet to convert CIA server. It shocked many people. As smart home become more popular, those hack will become more and more common. We analyzed the structure of a web OS based smart TV and looked at the attack vector and found vulnerability. We will talk about this process. Our project topic is making hacking scenarios and demonstrate it for smart TV the analysis of web OS vulnerability. We analyzed about web OS based smart TV. Of course, it can be attacked by using vulnerabilities of kernel, application, networks, and so on. And the attack TV can be used as a zombie fish or it can cause serious damage such as file of broadcasting and privacy exposure. Let's talk more about web OS structure and analysis. First, web OS history and web-based software platform versus native software platform. After then, web OS feature, web OS smart TV emulator analysis. The last content of section is web OS smart TV structure. This is web OS history. Palm developed web OS in 2008 and after then, in 2009, Palm Free OS based web OS was developed. In 2010, H2, HP took over Palm OS and the Open Web OS project was announced in 2012. Since then, web OS has been used in various IoT, IoT devices. There are advantages and disadvantages of the native software and platform and web-based software platform, which is the basic structure of web OS. The native software platform is hardware and OS dependent, but it's relatively fast and difficult to support multi-platform. The web-based software platform is relatively slow, but easy to develop platform independent and portable. Web OS application is performed on the browser though HTML, JavaScript, HTTP as a web format. There are three features on web OS. The web OS application developed by annual JavaScript framework and runs on Node.js to optimize performance. The Luna protocol allows the web OS system and applications to communicate with, with each other. The main system of Luna protocol of the web OS is as follows. Messages sent to via the Luna protocol in the web OS application are first delivered to Luna bus. 
Luna Boss check the permission and request information of received message and perform service of the system or deliver message to other applications. Due to security issues, only built-in application can access private system resource using private bus. The third-party application register with the public bus to prevent access to the internal API that use the private bus. There are several important applications in WebOS. SAM is a program for running application that is not web-based. Web Application Manager is Chrome-based Qt Web Engine program that runs WebOS applications. Application install demo is that is always learning to install application. And Activity Manager is service process for managing all activities that run on WebOS. Unified service server.js script file is the local web server for running web OS applications. We downloaded web OS TV SDK and analyzed the web OS TV emulator before analyzing real web OS TV. You can download SDK from web OS TV developer homepage as follows. In SDK, there are CLI, ID, virtual box VM, remote control, and so on. The reason why we analyze emulator is uh, that the emulator was provided for application testing. It can be has a similar environment with real web OS TV. And we thought that it will be looting easily. Thus, we can predict the real web OS TV environment and can find the attack vector. But we were able to access the emulator only with the developer account. So we could not figure out the internal structure due to permission issue. Therefore, we analyzed the VMDK as partition file. There are four partitions in WebOS emulator virtual disk. In partition two, there are scripts that decrypt and mount partition three that encrypted with locks. Partition three that, uh, ah, sorry. So we thought in partition three was an important file system associated with the actual TV emulator. We put the VM with Linux Live CD. We found a script named mount encrypted.sh file during checking config file of partition two. There were commands in the script that execute specific binaries to decrypt partition three and mount the file system. Because of the Linux Live boot, we need to set environment of emulator. We ran the decryption binary with S trace and got the decryption key. Finally, we decrypt partition three and mounted it. When we analyzed the mounted partition three, there were a lot of script used to initialize the emulator. And we found a command to run the probable SSH daemon named drop bear in the script file. The W and G options in the binary are blocked a root access. We leave the, those options. And successfully obtained the root shell. So we connect to the root shell and analyze the emulator. And we were able to predict the structure and environment of real TV. However, the application in real web OS TV are running in their own sandbox. In addition, the remote control uses different binary and has different work process. Used to open up 
OpenSSH for SSH daemon is hard to exploit. And we can't access frame buffer for manipulate screen even if we has a root privileges. And architecture was ARM, which is different with Emulator. This is about vulnerability analysis of real web OS TV. Uh, Mingan will talk about attack vectors of some key processes and vulnerability that we found. Thank you. Yes, uh, this section is about vulnerability analysis and over the with our web OS TV, I will talk about yes, attack vectors and vulnerability. We analyze the several key processes that have input to find vulnerabilities in real web OS TV. There were app install D and SAM that were also found in the emulator. And there are additional processes that exist for functions about real web OS TV. App install D is a demo that is always running to install application. And SAM is a process that helps to executing non-web-based application. LSOBD is a demo about Luna protocol. Maybe it exists in the emulator, but we could not notice it. <coughs> PSA server is a Bluetooth server process. If for communicating with the remote control. <coughs> and UPnPD is used by mobile remote control to find TV. SS.API adapter is a server process for communicating with the connected mobile remote control. Uh, the attack vectors over each process and the possible vulnerabilities are as follow. Uh, because these all processes are sending and receiving data, uh, so a VF type vulnerability can occur. So I will talk about other vulnerabilities, other possible vulnerabilities. Yes. Rest of the is a demo that processes process Luna protocol data centrally. It transfers commands uh, that receives from WebOS application to a system or other WebOS applications. So it maybe has command injection vulnerability. SS.API adapter is a server process that communicates with the mobile remote control. It receives general TV functions and touchpad inputs. So uh, it uses secure web socket for general TV functions. But because of the speed, it uses just web socket, not secure web socket, to receive touchpad inputs. So it maybe has command injection vulnerabilities and also it may be possible to perform a replay attack by capturing the packet. UPnPD is a demo that broadcasts to announce the presence of TV for mobile remote control and maybe it has a vulnerabilities such as CSRF or command injection, like a home router. But actually, we could not find uh, any other functions that uses UPnPD except broadcast. So I think that it's too hard to find the vulnerability in UPnPD that was used in on WebOS. Next um, is a processes that related with the web web application. Web app manager is a binary that uses to run the web web application. It maybe has 
uh, vulnerabilities that were related with Chrome. Because of the Web App Manager uses Qt Web Engine based on Chrome. Node.js is a local server for WebOS application. It maybe has a vulnerability about Node.js. Uh, for your information, uh, WebOS application is launched in the sandbox. Uh, people will talk. Although, so, although if you exploit it successfully, WebOS application, but it will still in the sandbox. So, so you need you need to bypass the sandbox even if you exploit the WebOS application. It's the key point. <laughs> PSA server is a server process that communicates with remote control using Bluetooth signal and can perform replay attack about PSA server by using captured Bluetooth data. Uh, yeah. If you buy more expensive TV, then yes, it will have more functions and there are more attack vectors, and the result is a more vulnerabilities. We analyzed two TV with the same vendor, but there were no camera module. So it's too yes, disappointed thing. And there are voice command on there are voice command system that uses Bluetooth signal. That uses Bluetooth signal, yeah, Bluetooth remote control. It was supported on expensive one. So uh, in front of our TV, the TV, the TV doesn't support Bluetooth remote control. So the, the TV does not have a BSA server. This is a, this is a vulnerability yeah, that we found in real web West TV. The dev mem dv slash mem is a file that mapped, mapped with Linux physical memory. It was possible to read and write the dev mem from the sandbox account with the prisoner privilege. Therefore, we thought that we can learn shellcode by defining target binary in physical memory via dev mem. We selected ping.iputils as a target binary because it has a senuid attribute. So first we extract the some piece of code in the main function of the target binary with IDA. And then we executed the target binary. After executing the target binary, we checked whether the piece of code is, uh, is exist in devmem or not. And it was uh, exist in physical memory, yeah, devmem. Summing up, the attack process is as follow. Load the target binary that has a senuid attribute into physical memory by executing it. Find the binary code and then find the binary code that was loaded into physical memory via dev mem and overwrite it with the shell code. And then if we execute the target binary again, then the shell code was executed. And successfully, we acquired root privilege. Uh, uh, it's so somewhat uh, some simple, but the key point of this vulnerability is an uh, incorrect permission. Incorrect permission check. We need to check permission about important files. Uh, and also, I will talk later, I read some document about WebOS. The reason of incorrect permission about this dev main file is to make the WebOS application that has prisoner privileges can access frame buffer. 
yes next we talk about another vulnerability dotical dotical is a vulnerability that can write data on read only memory it caused by rest condition in linux read on copy on write function of course web os was a vulnerable about this dotical vulnerability As same with the main vulnerability, we selected the target binary that has a senior attribute. First, uh, we compiled a new attack binary that executes the shell and overwrote the target binary using the cow vulnerability. So, we acquired root privilege by running the target binary overwritten with the attack binary that runs the shell. We made several hacking scenarios based on these results and we are going to demonstration, demonstrate one of them. When a hacker sees a TV, hacker can do a lot of things. Zombie fish, pirate broadcasting, wire tapping, and remote control. If a hacker can control the TV screen, it can cause a lot of social confusion by sending pirate broadcasts. Hacker can also capture network packets or analyze log files in the TV to collect user information. And then, hacker can use it for getting profit. We decided to demonstrate pirate broadcast through screen manipulation. So, we analyzed the Linux frame buffer to manipulate the screen. Uh, in general, Linux frame buffer can be manipula manipulated via dev fv0 with root privilege. However, WebOS's frame buffer was not manipulated. Uh, even if we are a root privilege. So, I decided to the frame buffer directly at the kernel level. I read, I read the web OS kernel source code that related with the frame buffer. So, I found frame buffer code, yeah in the web as kernel source code. I cross-compiled the Linux kernel module to direct access at the frame buffer on kernel level. And we are able to manipulate the screen successfully. Yeah, it's demonstration time. I wrote some code. Uh, this is a monitoring program. Uh, TV connected with the, the TV connected with the, the Router, but 
It is a TV's IP. Uh, yeah. Start. Uh, first, hacker check the developer mode application. If a uh, developer developer mode application is not installed in TV, hacker installed. Uh, Installing the developer mode application remotely. Developer mode application is uh, to connect with the prisoner permission terminal. So uh, to connect the TV with the terminal, we need to install the developer mode application. So now installing the developer mode application. Uh, on the developer mode application, uh, the, when the connect the terminal, the privilege is only prisoner. You can't get the shell about root. When, develop, when turning on the developer mode, the TV is rebooting. So, wait, please. Wait, please. Uh, waiting to TV waiting to connect the internet. Yes, connected. Yes, we connected and then launch. La uh, hacker launched the developer mode application. Mm. It's strange. I will try again. Yes. Sorry. Oh, sorry. We try it again. Yes. Oh, uh, hacker launched the developer mode application. Yes. And uh, enter the developer mode account. Is just simple, just a registration on the LG, I mean, developer, developer board website. Yes. And then turn on to, due to the turn on the developer mode, and TV was rebooting. TV waiting the internet connection. Yes. Yes. Oh, 
Oh, yes. Launch the development mode. Yeah, again, yes. Good. Yes, and uh, is attack is ready. Is attack start and uh, is some is the full chain process is so some many step. So uh, they need to reboot TV again. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, yes, <laughs> to get the root to share. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, if a hacker uh, target or uh, target or uh, some victim using the APT, but this process, uh, I think that this process is not problem. Yes, hacker can do waiting and step by step attack process. Yes. Never in develop for mode again. <laughs> yes, this is our last time rebooting. Yes. Develop for mode login and uh, enable the develop for mode again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, last time. Yes, is uh, now the hacker is waiting the reverse connect share. Yes. Yes. Uh, try connecting the share. Yes, we got the share, root to share. <laughs> ID is a root. Yes, and we uh, that assume that uh, big teams are watching TV. We are manipulate the TV screen. It's too hard. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. It's a uh, live stream. YouTube. Uh, we uh, we can't uh, turn on the live TV because of the uh, we can't receive the TV signal. Live TV signal. We can't receive live TV signal. So we are told with the uh, YouTube live stream. Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. Hack the power, yes. Yes. Where was the smart TV was hacked? Yes. Thank you. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, thank you. We are done. Yes. Don't worry. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Uh, yes, yes. 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 Oh. So yes, is is to big team can notice about that, but uh, we are, our scenario is uh, when the big team uh, analyze log file and then uh, hacker can know the big team's life pattern and when big team sleeping. Sleep at night, then hacker can process the attack process. Yes. So even if the TV is even if the TV is off, you can launch this attack. Like when they turn the TV off at night, go to bed. Yes, yes, you yes. Can hacker can turn on the TV when the power. Off. Yes, it this has all uh, options. Okay, yes. so so it's, so if it's sleeping, you can still activate. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Another another quick question. Oh. Um, <laughs> Have, have you looked into, uh, uh, you came in through the network there, have you looked into coming in uh, via like a DVB-T uh, terrestrial uh, broadcast? Because uh, I know, I know uh, DVB-T uh, allows uh, man manipulation of the web calls, so uh, the protocol's flaws and allows you to make calls out to the internet from the TV via the uh, DVBT, and I was just wondering if you had done any work in reference to this research, whether a delivery path could be done via that method. Uh, sorry, <laughs> it's too fast. To, uh, uh, DV, DV, uh, DVBT is a, 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 a digital video broadcast terrestrial. Uh, it's the ability to stream video to your TV in a local mode. Uh, they use it like you go into a building or something, uh, and you see they're running a whole bunch of stuff on the TV. Uh, often they can use a broadcaster, a local broadcaster, a short-range broadcaster, and using that protocol uh, to send a video signal. But the video signal allows, or that video signal allows the internal web services on the device to be triggered to make calls to the Internet to pull stuff down. And I wasn't sure whether you had done any work uh, in that in reference to your current research. Uh, oh. Okay, uh, oh, I really understand about your question, but oh, okay. uh, we, uh, we, we, do to, we did to talk about this, your question in the break time. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It, come, come to me, yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, if you have any question, we will let it for uh, you and background stage uh, until the coffee break time. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for him. <laughs>